Distinguished participants, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning another time. It is indeed a great pleasure to welcome you today for the official launch of the web portal Indeed360. Let me extend my warmest regards to our special guest, Mr. Sanjay Verma, correct. Consul General of India in Milan, who has agreed to grace this morning's event. event. A particular welcome to Mrs. Verma, that has very tight connections with our professors of the Department of Educational Science, and will be again here as a special guest on next Friday. I had the opportunity to speak with the founder and the authors of the project, indeed the 360, that is an excellent example of collaboration between the public and private sectors, between university and businesses. Once more, our professors and researchers are providing know-how to support the birth of innovative business and startup. We pay special attention to the transfer of innovation produced in our laboratories by our professors and researchers. In the strategy of our university, this is an important goal of our business, and we believe that it represents a significant contribution to the development of our society and to the growth of its competitiveness at international level. We also consider it important to encourage and facilitate collaborations, in particular at international level, with firms, universities, and public and private research organizations. These partnerships represent an important opportunity not only to enrich the research activities of our colleagues, but also to allow our students, graduates, and young researchers to come in contact with different realities, with different methods of approach, with different points of view, and those gain experience relevant to their future. For this reason, I would like to offer my best wishes to all the professionals involved in this interesting project. Our warmest thanks to Mr. Nihil Agarwal and Mr. Fabio Bicari, to Professor Stella and his colleagues at DISCO, our Department of Computing Science, for their great enthusi enthusiasm and dedication and for their key, contribu key contribution in the organization of this event. Those innovative content will certainly match our expectations. Thank you and good work. Okay. Madam Prorector, <coughs> Mr. and Mrs. Agrawal, friends, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would wish to thank the rector who extended this invitation for me and my wife to come over and uh, have an interaction with you. Uh, Mr. Agrawal and Mrs. Agrawal had been working on this project for some time and the soft launch is already there. Uh, I had seen their portal and uh, I must say it's, it's a very innovative portal. Uh, looks like an aggregator technology uh, with some tweaking and uh, I'm sure it will grow up with time and I wish them all the best for this. So thank you very much for allowing them to collaborate with Bikoka University uh, for the development of this uh, product, which will go a long way in bringing the two communities together. Now, why India Italy at this point of time? And that is a very important uh, uh, element to ponder about, to think about. Uh, India is a growing economy, no doubt. Italy is a very matured economy with a lot of innovations under its belt. India is innovating, but not as fast as Italy has done in recent past. So we need a not, lot of exper experience from our Italian friends, uh, particularly in appropriate technologies, 
which is the buzzword of today uh, when we talk of technologies. State-of-art technologies are difficult to develop, very expensive to buy, and still more expensive to maintain. But when we look at appropriate technologies, those are the ones which is required by the larger part of the world. More than 70% of the world cannot afford the cost of the technologies which are developed in the labs uh, uh, with very high level of innovation in the state of art segment of the technology development. Now, this particular portal, uh, uh, which uh, I had a chance to visit, I found could not only be used for India, Italy, but it could go even further to, to have digital contents uh, 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 which can also drive other types of interactions, including the community relations and community development. Just to tell you a little bit about what we are doing uh, uh, between India and Italy, uh, even in the crisis period, uh, which is worsening by the day uh, globally, I'm not only talking about Italy, I'm not talking about only Europe. Uh, if I look at our statistics uh, from, from the Indian sources, uh, we calculate our trade relations on the basis of the Indian financial year, which starts on the 1st of April of a year and lasts and ends on the 31st of March of next year. If I look at that, even in a very crisis-ridden period of 2011-12, which means 1st of April 2011 till 31st of March 2012, our bilateral trade still grew by about 17%. It's, it's, a, it's a great uh, uh, pride for all of us who are involved in increasing this interaction and out of which the Italian exports to India increased by 27.52%. Whereas, it is not so easy to find new markets at this point of time. It is not so easy to drive a growth in the old market at this point of time. India is presenting both old market and new market. New market for innovations, old market for traditional products such as machines and tools. One third of Italian exports to India consist of machines and tools. So it's a, it's a very, very important uh, segment and all these machine and tools have got innovations, both appropriate and some of them quite state of art uh, uh, in, in, involved in them. For example, we are doing a lot of component imports for our uh, space research projects from Italy. Now they are state of art. But at the same time, we are doing food processing equipment import from Italy, which, didn't, which are not exactly state of art, but which are very appropriate for the situation in India. If I look at the basket of products, uh, they have not undergone much changes. And exports from India are iron and steel, auto components, vehicles. Now, this is, this is something which is a new addition in the last three, four years from India. And India is exporting a lot of vehicles to Italy, which is not very well known. And these are not under the Indian names. These are Hyundai, most of them. And these are Suzuki. Hyundai has made India as the base for mid-segment cars manufacturing. They are coming here. Suzuki to a larger extent, uh, is doing all its manufacturing activities in India. Uh, there are other products. When we talk of communities, we talk of resident communities, we talk of people who are visiting each other. And this particular portal could be useful for both. Those who are staying for long term in either of the countries and those who are visiting. When I look at the po people who are visiting each other, Last year we issued, last calendar year, we issued about 62,000 visas from Milan and 30,000 visas from Rome. So say about 100,000 Italians would have got the visas for India, which would mean about 130,000 
entries by Italians into India because many people go twice. Many people would go multiple times. So that, that's, that's an important source of inspiration for this particular portal. When I look the other way, which is Italian, uh, Indians visiting Italy, Italy, not very easy statistics to calculate because you have a Schengen region. <coughs> and therefore people go from a country to the other without uh, the authorities uh, uh, letting know there. But if I only look at the hotel booking uh, statistics from India, it is about 213,000 last year. So between the two, we are talking close to about 325,000 uh, uh, persons, natural persons, moving from one country to the other, which itself would provide a good basis for further growth and development of this particular portal. I just thought I'll, exp I'll, I'll, I'll bring up these points on the table to let you know how important this portal could become uh, in coming days and years. And uh, if the content generation, which is going to be the main task probably, uh, would be something which would interest the larger communities, I'm sure we are going to look at it as a main foreign policy tool for India, Italy, bilateral relations and its enhancement. Wish you all the best once again, Nikhil and Pyle. And uh, thank you very much, sir, for hosting uh, uh, this particular event, inviting us, and also giving Mr. and Mrs. Agrawal an opportunity to interact with your professors and take it to the next level of innovation. Thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I I'm pleased to join the rector, Professor Fontanesi, in welcoming Mr. Verman and Mrs. Verma, Consul General in India and Milano, and you all at this uh, official launch of the web portal, of which I'm very proud. I followed the project, uh, not since the beginning, but at some point, and uh, I can say that I immediately fall in love with this project. Very important. I fully, I have a great respect for India as a country and also uh, for the Indian culture that can mix really, as you told us, the new and the old in a great way, I can say. As you know, the University of Milano Bicocca has been constantly committed in implementing any opportunities of knowledge sharing in order to deliver an important contribution to achieving higher level of effectiveness in different sectors. For this reason, the University of Milano Bicocca has signed during these years over 300 agreements worldwide to make it possible for students, researchers, and faculty members to go abroad to exchange their knowledge with our international partners and to bring new knowledge back home. We are engaged in promoting technology, innovation, research, culture for a better world. Therefore, we are particularly glad for the special purpose of INDIT 360, a project that aims at fostering relationship between Indians and Italians, two communities with already strong ties. Many of our professors already have long-lasting relations with Indians colleagues, and Milano Bicocca has a number of uh, cooperation agreements with Indian institutions, such as Allahabad, Allahabad University, Jadavpur University, the Poon University, the Institute of Management Technology, the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai, the Institute for Indian Mother and Child in Kolkata, Furthermore, for many years now, we have been organizing a successful summer school program in cooperation with the Xavier Institute of Management and Internship in Bangalore. Increasing the number of people yes. exchanging between India and Italy. <laughs> <laughs> number of our students were asked for the visa. This year, we are also promoting an innovative triple master uh, program together with the SP Jain Institute of management in Mumbai and a Chinese university. So a triangle between Italy, <coughs> China, 
and India, which is very interesting. We strongly believe that uh, internationalization is one of the spearheads of Milano Bicocca policy as an essential component of the teaching and the research process, a response also to globalization. The growing independence of countries, economies, cultures requires a new generation of students, researchers and professionals, open-minded and why not, open-hearted. Universities have the mission to shape a cosmopolitan vision of human communities where students, researchers, professors can live and work side by side, either really or virtually, and or which virtually, in a complex yet connected world. As a member of the Expo Milano 2015 scientific community, the philosophy behind Indit 360 concept immediately stuck me, as I believe it's in line with the Expo 2015 teams. Communication, exchange of ideas and knowledge, information everyone on the planet should have access to. My personal thanks and best wishes to all the professionals involved in this project. Through information sharing, Indit 360 represents an important step forward to integration of minorities in our society, fulfillment of their needs, a supportive tool for reciprocal aid, and <coughs> really, thank you for this very beautiful initiative. Thank you. And now I'm pleased to give the floor to Dr. Nikhil Agval. Thank you. Thank you, Consul General. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Verma, for coming here. Thank you, Rector. Thank you, Pro Rector. Uh, I'll not go into details of uh, much technical details of NDET because I'm not a technician. I'll, um, how come NDET? I somewhere read a term. Harness serenity. Uh, serenity in English means happy movements or inspired movements. So there have been some movements uh, in our lives, Piles and mine, Piles the promoter of this portal. Uh, we are from India. So uh, we, I love enjoying cappuccinos on Saturdays and Sundays in my small place in San Felice. <laughs> And I would go there for four hours reading newspapers, reading journals, taking along Pyle and my son. And she would be like any other person would be saying, why are you wasting your time on all these four hours of your family time on journals? So she said that, let me wish for a computer program where uh, all this news and all this relevant information will come to you on a, uh, by a uh, within movements. So in computer terms, it meant push versus pull technology. So that was one of the movements. We are from India. So India loves cricket. And I love cricket. It's a cricket, it's a game. So when we moved to Italy, watching cricket was very difficult. In those days, even the internet would not give so much of channels of uh, cricket. So we will be bootlegging internet connections to find something on the, on whatever was, was available. Uh, the Indian community, me, you know. One fine day, one of our friends just mentioned, please go to the ESPN website and see live telecast of cricket match. I said, wow, for me that was something uh, very important. So that was about community, that was about information sharing among the communities. So the second movement, uh, many movements are more, but third, like every, again, I'm from India. So whenever I'm passing by the airports or I'm meeting new people, everybody will think that I'm an IT professional. <laughs> so I've been telling all the people that I'm not IT professional. I'm not from information technology all these years. My uncle who's from India and uh, great entrepreneur, he can vouch for it that I am from fashion business, nothing to do with information technology. So, but basically, after years and years, everybody said information technology, information technology, it gets ingrained in your back 
of your back mi of your mind. And we said, why not? So all these movements, some of these movements, me and Payal said, why not do something? And while Payal had to do something different, we came up with the concept Indit 360. Indit is India, Italy, 360, trying to give all the services on one unique platform. So this is how come Indit. What is Indit? Uh, there's a term that I've been reading and I know, as all Indians will know, Jugaad Innovation. Jugaad Innovation, uh, Jugaad is an Indian word, very commonly used Indian word, which is an ingenious way of overcoming adversity. And Jugaad Innovation basically means frugal and flexible approach to innovation. And one of its six principles states include the margin. Because everybody has been talking about masses. All the services in this world are mostly given to the masses. Uh, nobody will think about the marginal, not nobody, many of the corporations will not think about the marginal societies or the marginal communities. So the Indians or the Ita Indians in Italy and Italians in India are the marginal communities. So they have to be informed, they have to be given services and they should have less struggles in their day-to-day -day lives. So, so this was the concept uh, of Jugaad coming up using, Jugaad is also about uh, a garage way of starting, a po uh, starting something. So minimum resources. So Pyle wanted to do something different. So it was less resources, but focused resources. Uh, so the bedrock principle of Indit 360 is and was to include the marginal segments like us. It is a platform that will overcome linguistic barriers. It aims to foster a relationship between Indians and Italians as Dr. Lavritrana mentioned. It is one-stop portal with information services specific to communities, a platform to connect, exchange, and stimulate. Why Indit 360? Technology was the fastest and relatively inexpensive way to start off the ground. In few months ago, we decided, we started with this concept. And technology has taken amazing leaps and applications in these recent years. Everybody is aware of it. In my simple interpretation as a layman, no, few, just to give you an example, few years ago, in a benzene or in a gas station, the signpost, people will put up, will take up hours to change the prices. Go up, change the prices every day, cumbersome activity. Now I see that people are doing with the remote controls or even the, the NL will be able to do it from their sitting from their headquarters, giving uh, dynamic prices. And uh, other day, I was just driving and I thought that why not? The windshields will become our future windows and the gas prices will be projected on those windows and there will be no need of signposts in the future, if not in five years to 10 years. So simply technology is something that is around us. Why not use it? And why not try to give information through those modes? Uh, so why not leverage these developments to connect the underserved and unserved marginal segments, the communities like us? In India, there's a popular saying, Bhati Ganga Mein Haat Dholo. In uh, literal meanings, it means uh, wash your hands and flowing Ganges. And in uh, the phrase actually means be opportunistic. So Pyle was being opportunistic to use technology to start something uh, fast and quick. And uh, why are we at, at this great university of Milano, Bicocca? We are trying to build Birbal. We are here to build Birbal. Uh, uh, I'll come back to the Birbal. But uh, uh, my son goes to uh, a school, British school in Milan. And uh, when, 
when we had to start uh, Indit 360, we, uh, we went to a parent of uh, one of our uh, parents of one of our friends of our son. He's here, Mr. Andrea Propolini. Uh, he's a genius working on the complexest derivatives and financial instruments that require a lot of computational mathematics. And he, like one experienced sage, advised us to connect with the research professors at university to get project off in a right way. So, and with his reference, we came to Professor Stella. And uh, Professor Stella was also having one of his serendipity uh, moments. And we started off the project. I think Professor Stella, uh, just after the meetings, he said yes. I said yes. Let's move forward. And it happened like that. So again, what are we doing at Bikoka? We are building Birbal. So Birbal was the minister in the court of great Akbar in Indian history. And Birbal represented a person with wisdom, peripheral 360 degree vision, and with unmatched big data knowledge, who would give solutions to the great king for the complex and simple solution problems alike in nanoseconds. So it made sense to name our computational algorithm model as Beerable. And we just uh, tried to elaborate the alphabets, and we came up with it's a brilliant information research big data algorithm. So this is what uh, we came up with Beerable. So uh, the rest of my colleagues uh, later on will, and also from the industry, will talk about India and Italy. But I take this moment to officially launch Indit 360, and I will request uh, Prof, uh, Mr. Sanjay Verma, the Consul General, to click on this Indit 360. Yeah. So this is what Indit. You so, uh, Professor Stella. So I think. Um, no, no, and thank you for being here. It's somebody from the family is here, so that is very emotional for us. Thank you. Um, good morning to everyone. Before to begin with the presentation of the Indy 360 project, I would like to thank the University of Milano Bicocca, in particular the rector, Professor Marcello Fontanesi, for his uh, welcome and uh, hospitality, and uh, Professor Maria Luisa Lavitrano for organizing and coordinating this event. I would also like to thank the speakers. Mr. Sanjay Verma, Consul General of India, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Nikhil Agarwal, who strongly wanted this event to happen, uh, Professor Marco Restelli from the University of Milano, uh, Mr. Fabio Bicari, and uh, uh, Mr. Boldorini. Uh, Finally, many thanks, obviously, to all of you for being so kind to attend this event. Why the Indit 360 project uh, is important? To answer this question, I suggest to read the report titled Global Trend 2030 Alternative Words, published in December 2012. The report begins presenting an apocalyptic view of the world predicting that in 2030, the world will be radically transformed from our world today. The report identifies four megatrends that will shape our world out to 2030. These megatrends are individual empowerment that they will soon focus on, diffusion of power by which Asia will have surpassed North America and European Union 
combined in terms of global power um, based on gross domestic product, uh, population size, military spending and technological investments. The third mega trend is demographic patterns with specific reference to population aging and migration. The fourth and last mega trend, which is analyzed in the report, uh, uh, is the one named food, water, energy nexus, with uh, uh, food, water, and uh, energy requests, which are expected to grow respectively by 35, 40, and 50% in 2030. Individual empowerment, diffusion of power, and uh, demographic patterns are the most important megatrends for the INDIT 360 project. Individual empowerment will accelerate during the next 15, 20 years, uh, owing to poverty reduction and a huge growth of the global middle class, greater educational attainment, and better health care. The growth of the middle class is a tectonic shift. For the first time, a majority of the world population will not be impoverished, and the middle class will be the most important social and economic sector in the vast majority of countries around the world. Individual empowerment is the most important mega trend because it is both cause and effect of most other trends, including uh, expanding global economy, uh, rapid growth of developing countries, and widespread exploitation of new communication technologies, as has been already told. The report also presents and discusses uh, the diffusion of power megatrend. In particular, the report analyzes how communication technologies will cause a power shift toward multifaceted and amorphous networks that will form to influence state and uh, global uh, actions. I think it is particularly important the following statement. Uh, those countries with some of the strongest fundamentals, gross domestic product, population, size, etc., will not be able to punch their weight unless they also learn to operate in networks and coalitions in a multipolar world. In such a framework, social media and communication technology are playing and will increasingly play a fundamental role. According to the report, smartphones are likely to accelerate the empowerment of individuals, introducing new capabilities to the developing world in particular. The reduced need for developing countries to invest and uh, uh, build expensive, costly communication infrastructure will almost remove existing barriers to development and growth. The shift to cloud architecture will improve utilization rates of computing infrastructures and optimize network use. The cloud also will put increased computing capability and meaningful analysis in the hands of 80% of the world's population. It is evident that uh, mobile devices are becoming increasingly rich sensor platforms, enabling nearly all communication mediated by technology to be tracked and analyzed at a fine level of detail. More than 70% of the world's population already has at least one mobile device. Global middle data traffic in 2010 was three times the size of the entire internet in 2000. I have been impressed by the forecast that by 2015, only two years away from uh, now, in Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, South Asia and the Middle East, more people will have mobile network access than with electricity at home. What did not surprise me is that cheap digital storage will result in nearly all data to be archived indefinitely. Information in this sense will be smart about itself. It will be indexed, categorized, and richly tagged upon collection so that it can be analyzed uh, later. Why India is the subject of the Indit 360 project. The answer comes from analyzing the forecast about the consumption of the middle class. In particular, the graph that you see depicts the shares of global middle class consumption from 2000 to 2013. The color blue is associated with the United States, the light blue with European Union, green with Japan, brown with China, orange with India, and beige with other Asiatic countries. As well as you can see, in uh, 2000, European Union and United States had a cumulative share of around 60%. 
Today, they have no more than 46, while China and India in 2000 were negligible and still marginal in 2013, accounting together for less than 10%. However, forecasts tell us that by 2018, just five years from today, the picture will probably be very different, with the European Union and United States that are expected to shrink their cumulative share to 38%, while China and India will approximately double their share, moving from 10 to 19%. In 2023, India will reach the China share level, while in 2028, India is expected to be ahead of China by achieving a share of 21%. The picture completes in 2050, where India is expected to lead the world in terms of consumption of the middle class. These data make me think deep uh, about the deep concern that uh, all in Italy we must have concerning this huge growth and this huge opportunity that uh, I suggest not to waste. With this slide I summarize the answers that I give to the question why the Indeed 360 project is important. It is important for at least the following reasons. First, the economy is expected to expand with the specific reference to developing countries which will be interested by an extraordinary rapid growth process. Second, the growth process will be accelerated by the widespread exploitation of communication technologies. Remember that by 2015, the Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, Middle East, uh, more people will have mobile network access than with electricity at home. This is really impressive. Uh, third, uh, the middle class will be the most important and, uh, social and economic sector in the vast majority of countries around the world. Uh, fourth, India has been forecasted uh, to be the most important game player in the next future for what concerns the consumption of the middle class. Therefore, to accelerate integration and attract investments, it is fundamental to bridge India and Italy at all levels, education, business, art and culture, cinema and theater, institutions and communications. The bridging is implemented by maximizing the information flow between the two communities in such a way to favor and accelerate integration and to increase development and business opportunity. Now I would uh, like to focus the attention to the goal of the INDIT 360 project, which can be briefly stated as follows to favor the integration between India and Italy and to support business opportunities of the Italian community in India and of the Indian community in Italy. The concept of Indy 360 is that of wisdom <coughs> enhancement. As described in Prinsky in 2010, and as an enhanced humans, we are limited in our perception and constrained by the processing power of uh, functioning of, of our brains. As a result, we tend to go astray in our thinking in ways that limit our wisdom. For example, we make decisions based only on a portion of the available data. We are limited in our ability to predict the future and construct what-if scenarios. We cannot deal well with complexity beyond a certain point. We find it difficult to hold multiple perspectives simultaneously. And finally, we forget. Some of these failures arise because we do not have access to necessary data, while others stem from our inability to conduct complex analysis, derive full understanding from the ever-increasing volumes of data available to us. All of these factors reduce our capacity to judge situation, evaluate outcomes, and make practical decisions wisely. Fortunately, available and emerging digital tools can allow us to overcome this deficiency and attain the true digital wisdom. The goal of Indy 360 project will be achieved by means of wisdom enhancement, by empowering the members of the joint community Italia-India to accelerate the integration between India and Italy and to improve the business opportunities of the Italian community in India and uh, the business opportunity of the Indian community in Italy. Indeed, 360 portal consists of six areas. 
uh, namely uh, Indeed News, Inditians, Connect, Video, Point, and Events. Uh, events will be soon made available, while video is a beta release where selected multimedia contents are made available to users. In Titian, Point and Connects, which will be later presented by Dr. Fabio Bicari, offers directory, uh, several directories, geolocalization and social network functionalities. The user can know who and what is around him, can know about business, institution, art and culture, restaurants, cinema, theater, places of worship, airport and train station points. The user can know about transportation, including trains, taxis and planes. The user can also access judgments and opinions from Inditians, so, which are usually highly competent and reliable experts. Uh, Indeed News uh, informed the user uh, with the news which are judged to be relevant for Italians, Indians, and for the India-Italy community. Indeed News delivers news depending on the user nationality, whether it is Italian or Indian. Now I, I switch to uh, a demo, uh, trying to avoid the typical effect of the demo. Yeah. So, finger, <coughs> finger crossing. So, I simply click on the Indit News uh, uh, area, and this is what we, uh, what we can see. So, it's much better, it's much better to do like this. We simply, okay, maximize, and we go that way. Okay, uh, so the, the uh, Indit News portal consists of three main uh, sections. The, the section at the right uh, contains top Italian news and top Indian news. These are news uh, that are relevant for uh, the specific countries, so for Italians and for Indians, uh, taken into account as a separate uh, element. Uh, these news uh, can be assessed directly by clicking uh, on, the, on, the, on the text or on the image, for example. And if you want to access all the news, you simply use this radio button to shift between different news. Uh, on the left area, we have the categories of the news. Indeed, the Indeed news are also organized and categorized depending upon main categories which have been uh, decided. For example, we have business, we have politics, entertainment, sports, and so on. At the center of the, of the Indit portal, uh, we have the so-called Indit news. Indit news are in news that are relevant to the joint community India-Italy. Uh, these news are listed, uh, and uh, in particular, we uh, make available directly the 20, mm, the 20 last uh, latest news in this, uh, in this area. We can assess the information by simply clicking on the image. For example, uh, we can assess this news by simply clicking here. But what I have shown to you now is the, uh, the portal as can be seen from uh, a, an Indian point of view. I can also switch to the Italian user by clicking simply on the control Italiano. And then I will uh, simply uh, uh, be uh, redirected to the Italian news. So the Indian news, but from the point of view of Italians. Uh, for example, if I am a user interested in having only Indit news related to business, I can simply click on the business control and I am redirected to this specific area. For example, we would like to, have, uh, we would like to read the whole news uh, related to uh, Mr. Tata. We simply click on the picture and the new uh, windows open and we, ha we have the access uh, directly to the, to the full news. So we can obviously scroll this, we can read the news and so on. So we can access directly the information. Each new is indexed with the data, obviously with the source, with the data by which it has been published, and we also the uh, image is retrieved. 
Now, having avoided the, the demo effect, and so not want to abuse about this, uh, this fortunate event, I shift back to the, to the presentation. Uh, okay? So, <clears throat> but the question is how the Indeed News section has been implemented. The Indeed, the Indeed News section has been implemented uh, based on the Birbal, as already told by Nikhil Agarwal. Birbal exploits the unreasonable effectiveness of data publicly available over the web to learn flexible probabilistic models. Birbal does not throw away rare events, which is almost always a bad idea because much web data consists of individually rare but collectively frequent events. Mirbal takes advantage of the fact that with very large data sources, the data holds a lot of detail, which can and must be exploited. Mirbal starts from the consideration that for many tasks, words and words combination provide all the representational machinery we need to learn from text. Mirbal is a technological pipeline which combines probabilistic models and cloud computing to discover, retrieve, and organize relevant information from unstructured data. Mirbal makes available to the Indit News section the following main functionalities. Discovery, which discover over the web the news which are relevant for Italians, Indians, and for the joint Italy-India community. Retrieval, which uh, retrieves text and image from the relevant news. <coughs> and organization, which sorts relevant news according to the predetermined classes. Birbal updates its knowledge periodically. Uh, it asks what has been learned from the huge amount of unstructured data publicly available on the web. Knowledge update is fundamental to avoid the problem of concept drift. Birbal optimizes the use of computational resources by start starting the new discovery process when it is highly probable that fresh uh, news relevant for Italian, Indians, and the joint community are uh, available on the web. Finally, Birbal bridges relevant news between them to discover redundant information. I would like to conclude my presentation with the credits of the Indit 360 project, where I collaborated with uh, uh, Marco Rossetti, a special thanks goes to Marco Rossetti, who is uh, seated there, who received his master's degree in computer science from the University of Milano Bicocca in 2011. Marco Rossetti is currently a PhD candidate in computer science at the Department of Informatics Systems and Communication. He gave fundamental contributions to the project from both methodological and technological point of view. Many thanks to Dr. Davide Magatti, who received a PhD in uh, computer sciences from the University of Milano Bicocca in uh, 2010. Davide Magatti was awarded with the Telecom Working Capital Tour to, uh, 2010 uh, prize for the project Side Informat, which is somewhat connected with what we did here. One uh, uh, from 2012 he is working as big data analyst at NAMSITE, a marketing company located in Paris. I would also like to mention and thank very much Riccardo Corti, who graduated uh, working on a subject related with the Indy 360 project, and who just after having received his Bachelor in Computer Science from the University of Milano Bicocca in 2012, was enrolled by INDIT to continue his work on the INDIT 360 project. I would also like to mention and thank three students who gave uh, uh, contributions to the project. In particular, Andrea Bessi, students of the master's degree in economics at the University of Milano Bicocca, and Gabriele Bosio and Gianni Cavalli, students of the bachelor's degree in computer sciences at the University of Milano Bicocca. What I have presented today is my view of the Indit 360 project, that of wisdom enhancement of the India-Italy community members to favor integration and business opportunities. Today I also presented a concrete instance of how wisdom enhancement can be achieved by combining data, information, uh, which is publicly available over the web, with probabilistic models and 
technology. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you everybody, uh, grazie a tutti quanti. Um, adesso uh, abbiamo parlato uh, di Indit, abbiamo raccontato un po' uh, come nasce l'idea, eh, credo che sia giunto il caso di iniziare a vedere un pochettino il, il portale nel dettaglio. Eh, le Indit News sono state raccontate per bene adesso al professor Stella e il primo pensiero che abbiamo avuto è quello di cercare di dare in un'unica interfaccia tutte le informazioni necessarie del portale. Come infatti è stato già raccontato, potete vedere in un'unica interfaccia le Indit News, un aspetto degli Indicians, Connection, dove Indicians e Connection sono la nostra parte social, che andrò a spiegarvi più nel dettaglio. Abbiamo i video, che è, eh, i video in streaming, Point, che è il database di punti di interesse che stiamo costruendo, e, event, e gli eventi che stiamo pian piano costruendo e che presto vedremo di, eh, speriamo di vedere online. Eh, a questo punto direi, eh, do una rapida visione di, delle notizie già raccontate dal professore, ma così anche in italiano, per, farvi, per dire che noi volevamo dare la possibilità di avere tutte le notizie, sia Indit che non, in un'unica interfaccia. Quindi è stato costruito in modo tale da eh, dare molto rapidamente una visione anche via tablet, quello che accade tra India e Italia e quello che accade tra le top Italian News e top Indian News. L'obiettivo primario era quello che veniva raccontato inizialmente da Nikhil, quello di dare subito l'informazione necessaria in un, con un semplice clic. Gli altri punti fondamentali che voglio mostrarvi principalmente è partire da Point. Point, oggi come oggi, in un'epoca in cui Foursquare, TripAdvisor fanno da padroni, abbiamo una visione complessiva ma nulla eh, è dettagliato e ci siamo resi conto che molte informazioni relative a India e Italia non sono, eh, non sono state tracciate su, eh, su internet, non è facile recuperarle. Quindi cosa stiamo facendo? Stiamo costruendo un database che offre informazioni relativi all'India in Italia e relativi all'Italia in India. Prendiamo ad esempio in Italia, stiamo tracciando tutti i ristoranti indiani o in India i ristoranti italiani, viceversa, I punti, i, bis, i punti di business, tipo le aziende italiane, le aziende indiane presente in, presenti in Italia, e viceversa per le aziende italiane presenti in India. In questo caso, quindi, prima di un viaggio, o nel momento in cui ci troviamo in una, il, in una nazione straniera, noi sappiamo eh, facilmente raggiungere il nostro target. Naturalmente noi possiamo, eh, funziona tutto in base alla geolocalizzazione, quindi vediamo quello che è attorno a noi, però nello stesso tempo volendo possiamo digitare la città di destinazione, dire dobbiamo preparare il nostro viaggio per Delhi e semplicemente andando a Delhi, Verremo geolocalizzati su Delhi e potremo vedere tutti i ristoranti italiani, i punti di business, i punti di interesse che stiamo realizzando, che stiamo costruendo in, uh, in Delhi. Il database pian piano stiamo cercando, uh, deve crescere volta per volta e abbiamo, uh, chiederemo l'aiuto anche della community, aiutandoci a inserire uh, i nuovi punti di interesse che naturalmente verranno prima uh, analizzati e dopo inseriti sul portale. Uno dei primi aspetti fondamentali che ci siamo posti era come far crescere la community. I community oggi ce ne sono tante, c'è Facebook, Google+, Plus, un'infinità di cose, ma che cosa fa, eh, come fare, per, qual è il nostro target? Allora siamo giunti partendo da, eh, io sono un italiano che devo andare per qualche mese di lavoro in India ma mi sento, eh, a primo acchito sono un po' spaventato perché non conosco nessuno, non so come muovermi, allora abbiamo detto perché non cercare, non tracciare quali sono gli altri italiani presenti in India, ad esempio, o gli indiani presenti in Italia. Quindi abbiamo creato quest'area in Dichans dove eh, gli utenti della community, sempre se, permettano, se lo permettano, se lo vogliono loro, 
se danno il consenso alla geolocalizzazione, possono essere tracciati. In questo modo a me basterà andare con un semplice clic poi sull'utente e decidere di aggiungerlo alle mie connessioni e iniziare un primo rapporto d'amicizia, chiedere supporto, dico io devo venire lì, mi puoi aiutare a, a capire se ci sono dei ristoranti nelle vicinanze, se ci sono degli hotel più adatti dove alloggiare. O anche solamente per dire mi sento solo, voglio eh, ci prendiamo una birra insieme. Questa è l'area Indicians e eh, può, eh, vorrei eh, naturalmente poi volendo, sempre sull'area Indicians, come possiamo vedere, noi vediamo in questo caso l'Italia, però andando a ingrandire la mappa, noi possiamo vedere quali sono le altre persone che sono già in questo momento registrate in India. Ringrazio il professor Stella per aver offerto il suo profilo utente, <ride> dove possiamo vedere, allora, eh, stiamo costruendo connection, costru eh, costruita per, inizialmente per dare una, una visione sempre a box complessiva, dove in una parte discuss con, eh, costituisce l'area di chat, dove si può interagire con gli amici, dove si possono fare delle domande, però è, re, è interna, è solamente per, eh, per i tuoi contatti. Poi invece una delle aree eh, importanti che stiamo costruendo è gli expert. Expert chi sono? Eh, stiamo selezionando delle persone che eh, abbiano avuto esperienze con l'India, cioè ad esempio indiani, che abbiano delle forti esperienze con l'Italia. Eh, che quindi siano in grado attraverso articoli, racconti, di supportare il, il primo viaggio, il, le prime esperienze di chi si avvicina ad una cultura, eh, a, una, a una nazione estranea. Ad esempio quindi possono essere stesso tipo eh, persone che, italiani che vivono in India da anni eh, per lavoro, o per, anche solo per passione e quindi possano raccontare ciò che accade nel, nel, nel mondo indiano e italiano e viceversa. Questo in grandi linee è, è quello che siamo l'inizio di un nostro progetto. E uno dei punti interessanti che stiamo costruendo è anche il video, dove video, uno dei pensieri è, io mi, mi raccontava Nick il prima, eh, voglio vedermi le partite di cricket, ma non so come fare per dove trovarle. Ecco, noi offriamo, stiamo eh, costruendo delle aree per offrire dei video in streaming, eh, sia per gli italiani che per gli indiani, in una single, con un semplice click. Quindi andare su top eh, tv india, italiane o indiane e eh, vedere lo streaming del, dei nostri canali preferiti anche quando non siamo la nostra nazione e nello stesso tempo al momento sfruttando la tecnologia di YouTube andiamo a recuperare i top video che, o gli ultimi video che rappresentano uh, la, la nostra la cultura italiana e la cultura indiana questo in, uh, in grandi linee è Indy360 come portale e le news uh, sono il, uno dei cuori fondamentali che è stato realizzato con Uh, grazie a, al professor Stella e ai suoi collaboratori e, uh, direi che c'è ancora, uh, ancora tanta strada da fare ma io penso che sia veramente un buon inizio grazie adesso uh, passerei la parola a Stefano Boldorini che è il uh, presidente di IBF Italia Indian Business Follow Grazie mille, vicepresidente ufficialmente, ma vice president, but thank you the same. <laughs> oh, can you hear me? Yes. So thank you very much for your invitation. Uh, I will start, uh, sorry, some, okay. Okay. So my, my, my speech will be just a quick, uh, quite a quick and pragmatic uh, speech uh, coming from my personal experience uh, on the route between Italy and India. First of all, uh, allow me to uh, spend just a couple of words explaining uh, why I'm here, why I'm sitting here. I'm not Indian, I'm not an expert in foreign, uh, foreign trade. Uh, till two years ago, I have not been to India. So I always had 
had a great fascination to the country, towards the country, but uh, I had in my mind that I should have needed one month or two months to see all India, which is the dream. Then the chance came, if chance exists, uh, if we can say so. And um, uh, since I decided a couple of years ago to step out my, from my directorship uh, in a company's experience and uh, uh, start with my own uh, activities, my own personal activities, <laughs> Uh, during this uh, exploration process, I've been uh, uh, asked by some friend uh, from uh, for an expatriate uh, from the Indian community to join uh, a brainstorming activity that uh, the Consul General of India, Mr. Verma, was holding in order to create uh, um, uh, an association uh, with the purpose of uh, um, putting in touch the two business community, Italian and India, in order to make the things happening. So the vision was uh, complementary to all the other institutions, but uh, was quite pragmatic. If decision-making people uh, get in touch, uh, there is some chance that something can happen. Uh, and then uh, I've been asked to, 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 to join the executive committee and to um, support the foundation of the, of the, of the association, uh, which I joined with, uh, with a lot of uh, enthusiasm. I am an expert in, uh, in startups because in all my life I've been uh, part uh, in uh, some of the most innovative models in Italy, like uh, the launch of the third generation mobile, as well as the virtual network operators uh, in Italy and abroad. I've been working for IBM in Italy and abroad, so I have quite a strong experience in, in startup. Uh, and uh, also within larger uh, structures such as IBM or other Carrefour or other large companies. It's like a virus for me. <laughs> I, I decided to join uh, in a very naive way also because I didn't have any kind of uh, business interest, direct business interest with, uh, with India so far. So it was just purely uh, adrenalinic, uh, cultural uh, and uh, personal uh, interest. Then uh, I realized that uh, a lot of things uh, were not there, I would say, between Italy and India in general. And um, I realized uh, as well that uh, uh, when I joined the association, uh, without doing anything, all my previous uh, contacts uh, from companies in Italy uh, has been contact uh, contacting me uh, immediately and say, hey, can you support me to go to India? And I say, okay, let's discuss it. And uh, IBF is just uh, an association, so it's a no-profit association. Uh, it doesn't support companies directly to go. Uh, it's just a business origination uh, and uh, communication flows uh, uh, purposes. So I found myself in difficulties uh, in the sense that uh, as an Italian, I, I felt scared of realizing how many things were not there. Uh, Mr. Consul General uh, has uh, clearly explained uh, the trends as well as yourselves, so we'll not be going through the trends. But uh, from my personal point of view, what I realize is that uh, Italy is awakening from uh, the dream of uh, uh, its status quo, uh, and despite uh, the bilateral uh, trade is increasing, uh, the figures in Italy uh, shows clearly that the uh, unemployment rate between 2006 and 2012 uh, doubled. So we passed from 6 to 12, uh, more or less, officially. Lombardy is one of the richest uh, counties in the world. Last year has been, losing, has been increasing 30% uh, uh, the job loss. Um, the GDP is decreasing. So if it, if it is impossible nowadays to print currency money, if Italy is not attracting so much uh, uh, productive investment from, the broad, from abroad, uh, if uh, the internal market is stagnating, as well the, the traditional uh, European market we were used to sell to or the United States, this country needs to find uh, other sources in order to maintain uh, its structure. Uh, how, where Italy can sell in order to maintain all of these uh, uh, health, uh, okay, the, the old structure that, uh, that uh, is here. So Asia, it's, uh, Asia, it's 3.5 billion uh, inhabitants, as we clearly say that uh, is the future. India is 
uh, Italian companies, as far as I realized from my personal uh, uh, approach, uh, uh, yes, they are realizing that they need to do something from uh, probably my perception 2010, 2011. But nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, there is a, a really a lack of uh, uh, competencies from my personal point of view. Uh, yes, the 400 uh, companies which are already in India uh, are the most, the best known one, the, la the most structured. But nevertheless, Italy has a huge know-how in terms of product, uh, uh, also from uh, small and medium companies uh, that could be brought there. And if you do so, you start creating a virtual cycle and attracting also uh, interesting investment from India as well. You can buy good product for half of the price. You can attract uh, uh, direct investment, uh, revitalizing, re-energizing company which are uh, for any reason uh, with the lack of governance. And uh, my personal perception, which has been really scaring me, but also on the other side, gave me the, 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 the hints of a huge opportunity, business opportunity for anybody that wants to, to support this, uh, is that uh, the average size of Italian companies, uh, it's small, uh, there's a lack of uh, mentality, even lack of uh, skills in language. The Italians do not speak English. Uh, there is a huge difficulties. Uh, it's really basic, uh, but uh, it's true. Uh, I've seen with my own eyes. Uh, some of the companies are spoiled. Selling to, to Europe, it's easy. Going on the, side, on the other side of the world, it's much more difficult. And it requests a lot of energy, a lot of commitment. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the world is becoming smaller and smaller. Uh, information are more and more. Fake information are there. Uh, very, there is an opposite trend. Uh, I've spoken with, I have personal interest in photography, and I've spoken with some of the famous photographers that makes uh, the Italian trends after the 50s uh, very important in the world, uh, like Sean and all these guys. They are almost unemployed because uh, despite the fact that there are a lot of production in terms of uh, papers and magazines and blah, 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 nobody asked them to do real, uh, how do you say, uh, ricerche, uh, report. It's, uh, the reporting. So, uh, time to market, it's faster and faster. Uh, people are moving more and more according to this trend. The more, so, these, uh, some of the trends we have, I've been uh, realizing with my own eyes, uh, I cannot support. Like, uh, if the, and most important, it's Sistema Paese. If Italy, as a country, as an orchestra, is not supporting its companies, uh, as well as Germany, for instance, that has 1,500 companies already there in India, is doing, or France as well. I cannot do so. We cannot do so, sorry. The association cannot do so. What we can do uh, is uh, giving our commitment, day-by-day uh, -day work, uh, creating bridges by making the things happening through flowing of information, because this is one of the most incred incredible, but true, uh, lack of uh, um, uh, Lack of, uh, lack of, I don't know, but lack of, my cancer is something uh, which should be there. Uh, just another example, uh, I've been speaking with some companies, Italian companies, which are working uh, in the cold chain, and they are <coughs> top level in the world. Uh, from spilling uh, to, to production, they ignore India in general, the fact that India needs a lot of, uh, uh, need to build this kind, of, uh, this kind of excellence in the next 10 years. Also, thanks to the foreign direct investment approval for the retail, uh, which has been uh, approved uh, recently. So they were simply ignoring that. So I spoke with the owners. They don't have any marketing strateg strategic marketing uh, group to, 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 to research the opportunities worldwide. And then this is clearly one of the reasons through which you can lose your position very, very easily and uh, very quickly as well. So we cannot change the world. We cannot change Italy. Uh, what I can do through the association, uh, what I can do through the association, through my personal business commitment, which I'm starting now as well. Starting now as well, it's giving some support. Uh, and uh, in my opinion, a tool uh, such as uh, Indit, uh, which is now from Italy and India, but in the future can be from Germany, Turkey, uh, India, Myanmar, whatever you need in the world to put uh, two communities. Uh, to vertical communities in touch uh, 
it's quite useful because uh, giving this kind of support, uh, you are making the things happening very easily. Uh, so I really believe that uh, it's a crucial tool in the process of uh, creating uh, uh, wealthy nations and then wealthy populations as well. Thank you very much, uh, Stefano. Oh, excuse me. Now, um, we give the word to Professor Marco Restelli. So Marco Restelli is a, a professor and journalist. Uh, is endologist, have a big experience with uh, Italian and uh, Indian people. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank Agarwalji and the University of Milano Bicocca for the invitation and the possibility to celebrate with all of you the birth of Indeed 360. I strongly believe that this project will become an important instrument for a mutual knowledge between Italy and India, a knowledge that right now is still struggling to emerge, resulting insufficient. As a journalist and a scholar who has been working on Italian-Indian relationships for many years, I've had the possibility to see how India was pictured in the Italians' minds for, from the early 19th since, since today. Uh, till today. In 1992, I wrote uh, India in Progress, Gli Aspetti di una Sfida, a pioneer book published with the support of the Italian Indian Chamber of Commerce in Milan. It was the first book of its kind in Italy and it was aimed to introduce the modern face of India and get over those old and silly stereotypes of Indians seen as mystic people devoted only to yoga. But Italy wasn't ready to understand India's economical and cultural boom. A boom that can surprise only those who have never been familiar to India. Let me give an example. Why is India a country of excellent computer engineers and software creators? Because it has an ancient and great tradition in mathematical studies. The driving force of, India, of India's economic boom is its culture. But 20 years ago, Italy didn't know Indian culture enough to in understand its economical potentialities. 20 years have passed, the possession of India in Italy has changed, but not enough. Many media still write nonsense about India, and many media don't see Indians living in Italy. Regarding this matter, I would like to give you an example of something happened a few months ago right near Milan. As you know, about 100,000 Indians live in Italy and about 70,000 of them are Sikhs, who work mostly in the areas of Lombardy, Piedmont, Veneto, Emilia Romagna and Lazio. Italy has the second largest Sikh community in Europe after UK. So, the Sikh Channel Television, a broadcasting company based in UK, in London and Edinburgh, covering the Sikh community in Europe, decided to hold the Sikh Channel Television Awards here in Italy. The event took place on the 17th of November 2012 at Villa Castelbarco in Vaprio Dadda, near Milan, where the Sikh Channel Television prepared a beautiful gala. The reason was, I quote, to celebrate the outstanding roles played by Italian Sikhs. As over the years, the Sikh community has made a significant contribution to the Italian economy and to the rich cultural diversity of Italian society. Some of the awards given during the event were philanthropist of the Year Award, Agriculturist of the Year Award, Sevadar of the Year Award, Outstanding uh, Young Achievers in Sport, Public Service Award, Six in Education Awards, and so on. It was a really important ceremony broadcast all over Europe and it made the Italian Sikh community proud of it, even though no Italian media reported the event. No one. Italian Sikhs are still invisible. 
I'm sure that now with the Indit 360 portal, such events will be covered and they will have the right echo for their importance. Even though there are still many examples of how far we are from a real knowledge about Indians living in Italy, the growing diffusion of Indian studies in Italian universities is for sure a positive fact. Indeed, I would like to remind you that the Università Statale di Milano is the only center for studies on Hindi language and Indian culture in Lombardy, a center coordinated by Professor Donatella Dolcini, who is here and who I wish to deeply greet. And I'm pleased to remind you that every year our students attend the summer school organized by Università di Milano Bicocca. I would like now to, now to draw your attention to another issue, the growing presence of a peculiar Indian culture industry in our country, the film industry, known as Bollywood. Even though just a few Indian movies are distributed in Italian movie theaters, right now in Florence, an important cultural festival is taking place, the River to River Florence Indian Film Festival. The festival, the first of its kind in the Western world, was born in 2000 when the aim of pro with the aim of promoting the Indian cinematic culture. Nowadays, the Florence Indian Film Festival is well known and in 2012, it had the privilege to have as a guest Sri Amitabh Bachchan. If somebody is not acquainted with this name in Italy, the main reason is because in Italy, the big global industry of Bollywood is not well known, but it is an industry that each year sells 4 billion tickets in the world against the 3 billion tickets of the American film industry. In 2000, the BBC News made a survey on who was the most famous actor in the world. The winner was not an American actor, was an Indian. Amitabh Bachchan. Even though Indian movies are still not distributed in our movie theaters, they have been broadcast since four years ago by RAI, Radio Televisione Italiana, and in the web there is a growing number of Italian blogs, Italian websites, Italian forums dedicated to the Indian cinema and its stars. It's beautiful to see how Italy is beginning step by step to discover the Bollywood culture and it's interesting to know that Bollywood itself is discovering Italy too. In the last few years there have been more and more Indian film directors who have decided to come to Italy to film in new and interesting locations. That's the main reason there are so many Bollywood movies partly filmed in Italian locations. Movies such as Bacchnahe Asino, filmed in Venice and Alberobello in Puglia, or Rockstar, filmed in Verona, or Houseful, filmed on Puglia's coast. This is a very important fact since it's the sign of a growing presence of Indian troops in Italy, thing that opens the doors to a very interesting business, movie tourism. Indians love to visit the places seen on the screen, and that is one of the reasons we see today a growing number of Indian tourists in places like Venice or Verona or Puglia. To come an end, I really hope of a future where Indit 360 will be one of the most helpful projects in the relationships between the Indian movie industry and the Italian territory, with the aim of promoting Indian tourism in our country. I'm looking forward to a future where cultural relationships between India and Italy will be close, one each other and more profitable for everybody, both Indians and Italians. In this field, I really think Indy 360 will play an interesting and crucial part. Thank you all for your, for your attention. Or Bharat Mataki Jai.